So here are three easy morning routine steps to lose body fat. Number one, start your day with a big glass of water. So after you wake up, brush your teeth, and then have a big glass, we're talking 16 ounces of clean water. And by that, I mean, don't get, you know, plastic bottles and all that. So plastic bottles, even if it says BPA free, you're going to have plastic chemicals in there. There's going to be phthalates and bisphenols of some kind in there. These are endocrine disruptors. Also, these waters, when they tested them, will have sometimes a higher bacterial count than even tap water. I would not get plastic bottles, right? In my opinion, the best thing you can get is a reverse osmosis filter, and they don't have to be super expensive. A company that I'm not affiliated with is Waterdrop. Now, we have a unit from them. Everything is in one stage. So you have all these seven filters in one stage. Their filter costs $100, lasts for about a year. The unit costs about $300, $350 gives you super clean water, it takes anything out in it, and it's fantastic. Another option, if you don't want to spend that much money, is a um, simple activated carbon filter. It has to be a good quality. Here's the caveat. If you have your own well, let's say you live in the countryside, you can have, in some respects, better water, right? However, there could also be issues with it when there's runoff from pesticides, herbicides from surrounding fields, right? So if you have your own well, I'd probably go for the reverse osmosis filter. So again, clean water is very important and you start your day out with it, right? Some people ask, can I put a bit of lemon in there? Sure, if it's real lemon, like, you know, from, you know, squeeze a few drops in there, that's fine. But don't put anything in there that has calories. Also then, after your first glass of water, um, and I need to do this, so if needed, have black coffee, espresso, or tea, the key thing here is don't put any calories in there. And by that, I mean, don't put milk, don't put creamer, don't put oat milk or whatever people put these days, right? Any calories, whether they come from fat, protein, or from uh, sugar, they're going to spike your insulin. You stop fast. The reason why we don't want calories early in the morning is you are in a fat burning state. At night after your last meal, which I recommend not to have too late, and also, I don't recommend carbs with your last meal. So let's say you have, I don't know, steak and veggies at night. Fantastic. After about six to seven hours, your body doesn't have energy anymore. Everything's used up in terms of carbs and it starts using alternative fuels, which is your fat. It starts burning fat stores, right? So you're in this fasting state. You start burning your own body fat. That stops immediately as soon as you consume any calories, right? That's why in the morning, water and then black coffee, espresso, tea, fine. Don't put anything in it you continue to burn body fat in the morning, right? This brings me to step number two. Delay your first meal by two to three hours upon waking up. So let's just say you wake up at uh, 5 a.m., then don't have your first meal before 7 or 8 a.m. I wake up a bit earlier at 4.30. Now I have my big glass of water in the morning and then I have a triple espresso, otherwise I can't function. I don't put anything in it. You know, check my mails, do all these things. And then I do a workout in the morning. I think this is a great time to do a workout if your time permits, because this is a time where you're deep in your fasted state, hormones are optimized, right? And think of this evolutionary. This was the time when we got up back then. We didn't have refrigerators when we were hunters and gatherers. So, you know, we got up and then we had to be physically active to get our food because food wasn't just in the supermarket. We couldn't buy it. We had to hunted, we had to do something, right? And this is actually time that's really good for working out. Your body is meant to exercise in this time, right? So exercise in a fasted site if your time allows. Then that brings me to step number three. So as you fix your breakfast, I would make the first meal, your breakfast, high protein, moderate carbs, and low fat. That's in the morning after this fasting state. Now you waited two to three hours after you wake up, you're going to absorb whatever you put in. So your first meal is crucial because you will really absorb most of that meal. And if you eat junk, when you most absorb, uh, uh, get junk in, this is a good time to get protein in, especially if you just worked out, right? So I usually start with a big protein shake in the morning. And what I do is I make about three protein shakes for the day and they're blended all in the morning. So the important part here, as you fix your breakfast, prep your meals for the day, right? And uh, I prep my snack in the morning. I prep, so as I fix my breakfast, I prep my lunch. And then I have another protein shake in the early afternoon. All these I'm prepping together in this time. The only thing I don't prep in the morning is my dinner because that can vary from day to day. So when you make protein shakes, again, I recommend, let's say you have two protein shakes a day, mix everything for those two protein shakes, put it in two cups, take it with you. You know, have a little cooling bag, doesn't take up much space, have an ice pack in there and you can take it with you. It's a very easy thing to do. It's very productive this way. Also, your day is not full of surprises. You can calculate, hey, how much protein do I want for my day? How do I hit that protein goal? How do I make sure I don't have too much carbs? What's probably a good lunch that I can take with me, right? This way, it takes the guesswork out. You have your scheduled meals. You have your breakfast, let's say, at 8 or 9, right? You may, um, I will have another protein shake at about um, 11. Then my lunch will be like at 1 or 2. And then I'll have another protein shake a bit later. And these are small protein shakes, 20 to 30 grams of protein in there. Um, around 4 or 5. And my dinner is at 6 or 7, right? Dinner, again, is something I don't prep in the morning. 
But this way, you set yourself up for a day where you take the guesswork out of what you consume. You're not going to get stuck with, um, oh, I have just junk right now. I'm going to eat these potato chips and this. No, you take good nutritious food with you. You can determine what you put in there, what's your protein content. And I always, always recommend to really prioritize your protein, right? Each meal prioritize the protein in there. Always check with your primary care doctor. Are you healthy enough to have a relatively high protein diet? Most people are, but always check, of course. That's a caveat here. Um, it's hard for most people to hit enough protein. So even as we lose weight, one big mistake I see in my clinic is people trying to lose weight, they decrease their total caloric intake, including protein, and that doesn't work. Yes, you should decrease your carbohydrate intake. You should moderate your fat intake and go only with good fats. And as you cut out your junk foods, you cut out all those seed oils and soybean oil and all that crap, you replace with small amounts of you know, butter and avocado or olive oil, that's all fine. Um, but also what you wanna do is keep your protein high, and most people don't do that. That's why even if you don't work out regularly, I'm a big proponent of making a protein shake, at least one or two that you can have in the day. One can be a breakfast. And I'm going to link a recipe in there, how I do it. It's actually, it's actually quite simple. You know, you have, of course, your protein powder, water. I put some frozen strawberries in there. So there's a little bit of carbs in there from fruit. Make sure those are organic frozen strawberries. They're pretty cheap. You can get them at any supermarket, right? Uh, ground chia, ground flax seeds, about a teaspoon each per shake. And then maybe a dash of milk, just very little milk. Not that great. I use a lactose-free milk, but it's still got uh, sugar from the lactose, right? But anyway, so you make your shakes in the morning, you prep your meals in the morning, you're ready for the day. So you've now had uh, three steps that really help you to burn your body fat much better because you delayed your eating, right? So you use that fasting window, that automatic fat burning longer in the day, right? You started up with water, which is fantastic. You're hydrating in the morning, which is really good. Get ready for your day. Hopefully, if your time permits, get a even 20 to 30 minute workout in in the morning. And I would say, if you say my time, my time doesn't permit, think about if it's possible, wake up about half hour earlier. I tell you, it's fantastic to get this out of the way. It sets you up for the day. You have more energy for the day. You feel really good, right? And then you prepped your meals for the day. So you're not stuck at some point craving things or forgetting to eat, waiting too long to eat. You schedule your meals, right? I usually, uh, and I mentioned this in other videos, after your first meal, let's say your breakfast is at nine, I would eat about every three to four hours at least, maybe three hours, right? So 9 a.m. breakfast, 12 o'clock lunch, three o'clock snack, six o'clock dinner. That works really well. The three o'clock snack usually is another protein shake, which is easy to do. And again, you can take this with you. This way, you don't have long periods, uh, more than three hours, where you don't eat and go into this state of craving unhealthy things. So again, this sets you up for a very healthy day. It's also a lot cheaper this way because you can plan ahead. You can modulate uh, um, your uh, components, your macros. Again, prioritize your protein. I recommend to get about 0.8 to 1 gram, one gram per pound um, of body weight per day of protein. Talk to your doctor first if you're okay to do so. Uh, for me, 180 pounds, let's say, you know, I get about 180 uh, grams of protein every day. And dinner should be light later. So dinner is something you make later. This is something that you don't have to worry about in the morning, of course. I would always recommend to make the dinner the one meal that does not have carbohydrates or minimize your carbohydrates for dinner and make it on the lighter side, right? It could be something like a uh, meat and green vegetables, for example, or if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you can have a meat substitute, of course. And uh, again, prioritize your protein there as well, but you can have a lot of greens with that. So hopefully this is helpful. This, I think, is something that um, has helped me tremendously. Um, I implement this with all my patients. They're doing very well. People lose weight very easy with this. They don't have cravings. They feel good. And they also have a much healthier diet this way because they plan ahead. So if you found this helpful, please go ahead and uh, subscribe and leave a comment or question. I will read those and I will uh, definitely uh, answer those, but also use them for material. And also it helps other people to see how you start your day and if you have other suggestions that have been successful for your weight loss.